how's it going everyone how are you doing we are getting into week two of our elite battle league weekly roundup i am of course joined by my beautiful and handsome and very talented and funny co-host inferno man of course I, just by the description you should know he's i think that way hello <laughs> hello we good see hello uh one thing i wanted to mention real quick before we start here that I didn't mention last week is that I appreciate the name that that Fuis gave to uh, his Rotom Wash. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna bring that up. Same. I was literally gonna say the same thing when we got to that match. <laughs> um, so I guess we could go over that one first. Um, so I, I was gonna go in the order of when I how I watched them on Saturday if I could speak correctly, but because you brought that up, I'll go ahead and go over that match first. Uh, we have, let's just get right into it. the first matchup of the week, the Everglade Entes versus the Miami Dragonite. That was uh, an interesting one, uh, but yes, Billy Mays, the Rotom Wash. I love it. <laughs> that is, I love that nickname so much. Um, that's, that's the big brain nicknaming that, that <laughs> can only come from the mind of somebody as, as smart as Foos. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like just a, great a legend who worked a lot and is iconic for his association with a laundry detergent company who is also deceased and Rotom is a ghost so it possesses a washing machine so he's implying that that ghost is Billy Mays and that's amazing. I didn't even think about all that. that actually makes sense. <laughs> oh, actually, I forgot to mention as well. This is this week. I'm, I'm dubbing it the week of the blind Pokemon because of how many moves got missed. Um, <laughs> it's just there's so many moves that got missed this week. I had to give it that name because it's crazy. Oh, yeah, of course. Also, duh. check out the coaches in the description down below. They're all down there. All the links down below. Our links are down there. Or I'm pointing the wrong way. Our links are down there as well. Yes. Be sure to check out all that good stuff. And um, uh, if you go to my yes. channel and go to the channel section, you can find everybody in the Elite Battle League all there in a little section. Same here as well. There you guys go. Um, but right off the rip, uh tyranitar i believe he led with tyranitar uh the evergood entes left with, led with tyranitar um the mammy dragonites i think they led with shuckle again i believe um i'm like 99 percent sure on that um but of course tyranitar missed a stone edge right away uh, <laughs> but it honestly we'll see another match where a a uh move got missed right away and it threw the whole game off but this one not so much uh tyranitar was able to get rid of the shuckle shuckle was able to get the sticky webs and the, the um stealth rocks so it didn't it, it did what it had to do and then it got taken out um but this was pretty back and forth for a second i believe the final score was six four if i remember correctly um it was pretty back and forth for a second there uh it was just it wasn't as i don't want to say it wasn't as intense as the crowbats versus the end or the square bunnies versus the entes it was just in that match last week between the, the entes and the square bunnies it was a lot of switching a lot of you know chess movements a lot of little things here and there but this match was a little more faster paced i feel like foos probably knew that this match needed to be a little bit faster to make sure that he would have a better chance at winning but there were a couple of misplays on Foos's part. Um, enough to sway the match. Enough to give the Dragonites a little bit of leeway, a little bit of momentum. But I feel like one of the first things, uh, aside from the missed Stone Edge, because again, that really didn't impact the match. One of the first things was Rotom Wash missed Will O Wisp on Weavile. Uh, then Weavile used Taunt. Then one of the bigger misplays is that Foos switched into Clefable because he forgot that Weavile was a dark type uh, and Clefable's only move was a psychic type move which relied on cosmic power which got taunted by the Weavile so cosmic power couldn't get used, stored power couldn't hit Weavile and so he kind of made a misplay there by bringing out the wrong Pokemon uh, and he had to switch back out so he kind of burned a couple turns there uh, which was not good for him. And of course, I believe that we've all just went for poison jab. That's a safe bet. You're going to get chip damage off or potentially a poison on some Pokemon on on the Entei's. Uh, again, Shuckle did its job. But of course, uh, <laughs> so well, actually a little bit before you know who came back into the match. Uh, 
the Dragonite's MVP from last week. Um, the Glare and Slow King on the Entei's came in. Uh, I can't remember exactly what move it used, uh, but it did G Max, or I will not G Max, it Dynamax, and ended up using Max Flare, which brought up the Sun. And when the Sun was brought up, G Max Cinderace came out, and yeah, it was kind of it was kind of another case, same case as last week, where he's, uh, Cinderace came out. One of your MVPs of the week, by the way. Uh, Cinderace came out, G Max, and again, it was just able to tear apart the last three Pokemon on his team. Uh, he was able to finish, I believe it was Glare and Slowking, um, Clefable and Rillaboom were the last three Pokemon that Entei's had and Cinderace was able to come in and clean up shop. Um, again, we haven't really seen too much for the Cinderace. Uh, it's, I'm really interested to see if someone is able to counter it. That's just gonna, we, we kind of know it now, it's two weeks in a row where it's just going to be the Dragonite's Ace. We know it's going to be the Dragonite's Ace. So I'm very curious to see in future weeks uh, exactly what Cinderace is, exactly how other teams are going to counter Cinderace rather. But uh, what were your, what were some of your overall thoughts for this uh, this matchup here? Um, for one thing, I can say that, um, you know, it might be a little bit of a suspicion, but it seems to be that if you want to end up having a, a team member be the MVT, MVP for the week, uh, accidentally bring a Mon you didn't mean to bring into the match <laughs> because Guanaco did not mean to bring in his Weavile. He meant to bring in another yeah. Weavile. Yeah. <laughs> Last week, Derek forgot to bring in Snorlax and instead brought in Gengar, and then Gengar ended up being the MVP. So I don't know. If you guys wanted the MVP, just accidentally bring the wrong mod. Say, oops, <laughs> I totally meant to bring this one, and then bring in another mod. And then, you know, that's or just lie. <laughs> or just lie. <laughs> just like, yeah, I totally meant to bring in this mod. Um, <laughs> but here's my magic carp. <laughs> but um, yeah, very, very exciting match. Uh, did not go to the timer uh, like the last time we saw Foose. But um, for all these matches, I was really thinking of like, what what the rankings would be like how it would be affected um if anybody anybody lost or if anybody won um for a certain match um specifically talking about uh the braviary versus uh the uh <laughs> The Luxray, the Luxray. Yeah. <laughs> I said one of these guys is gonna make it, uh, make their record. Uh, one, one, and the other one's gonna make it, like O2 and stuff like that. Yeah. Like somebody's gonna have a completely losing record after this match. And who's it gonna be? They have the same s score right now, so let's see. Um, so like during Guanaco's match with with Foos, I was thinking. All right, so Foose is going to be 0-2 if he loses this. And I know that we said that he was going to be 0-5 this season as a joke, but like the whole time I was just like, please don't make this turn into a reality because we're going to look <laughs> <Yeah>. bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, GG's to Guanaco. Very, very exciting match. Uh, Foose, I believe in you for next week. I'll just put it at that. We'll see. With it. Uh, we'll go over his matchup later. <laughs> um, so one quick thing i did mention this beforehand regardless of whatever foos's record or the ante's record ends up at the end of the season i still think he's going to have a lot of close matches right now they're sitting in fifth at zero and two with a minus three differential um there's only one team behind them uh landed did bring them up we'll go over that uh next here um but i don't think any match for the ante's is going to be gonna be like not close uh you look last week it was five four went to the timer this week six four only minus two um I, I don't really see many of his losses going further than that i could see like all of them being minus one minus two losses if if he manages to lose every game um i don't think they'll be uh any of them will be like sweeps or anything like that so Regardless of whatever his record ends up at the end of the season, I can still see him having very close matches. Just it's just the team he has. It's very bulky, and it does the job. It's just I feel like maybe it's taking a second to kind of get used to the league and kind of figure out his team fully. Um, so I mean, I got faith. I got faith. He's he's got he he just makes a couple of misplays that do change the momentum. But you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Sometimes you make you feel like you make the right decision, but uh, when you look back on it, clearly it probably wasn't. 
Uh, but yeah, of course, GG's to both coaches. Uh, it was an entertaining match to say the least, but moving on to the one that Lana just brought up, the Atlanta Braviary versus the Detroit Luxuries. This ended uh, in a 6-3 fashion in favor of the Braviary. The Braviary took this one um, and it it happened again. <laughs> uh, is almost a repeat of last week where that, Max leads feeling. with Moltres, sets up the nasty plot, takes out a couple mons, and then the match just flips on its head again. I was like, <laughs> I was like feeling, is this deja vu? Like I'm, I'm watching the same match. Like Moltres yeah. comes out first, destroys half the team, and then it's like a major turnaround. Except for. Mm -hmm. Like, watching Guinaco's match, I know that he was, like, shaking in his boots the whole time, like, am I going to be able to turn this mm. around? And Matt is very passionate when he battles, <laughs> so let's say, if you, if you if you have not watched the, the match with the Atlanta Bra Braviary's POV, definitely watch it, because this man, oh. this man gets into it, like, <laughs> yes. um, specifically when uh, he missed a move on uh, Max's Togekiss, Game Review's Togekiss, um, he let out a yell that obviously worried one of his kids who came over and said, are you angry? <laughs> Matt, uh, Josh and I were talking about that before we started recording. It's just like, <laughs> that's, that's the most memorable part of the match because like, he's just like so upset about it that his kid was just yeah. like, okay, dad, <laughs> need me to take this <laughs> over for you? <laughs> yeah, that was probably, uh, one of my favorite uh, parts of the commentary, at least during, it was definitely my favorite during the matches, uh, because at one point, uh, this was the after match, they were having a discussion, and and Matt, <laughs> Matt told Max that uh, uh, Age of Slash didn't have King Shield, and Max just went, what? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that <laughs> too. Funny. I would have been the same way, because like, I don't think I've ever battled a Age of Slash without King Shield. <laughs> Yeah, um, but this match was interesting. Uh, Matt pretty much predicted, or like, sorry, Stone Family 64 pretty much predicted the entirety of Game Review's team. Again. Um, again. He's good he, at predicting. He, yeah. <laughs> he, got, he got them all. Um, but throughout this, again, Glare Moltres got off to a hot start. Um, the thing is, this time was a little bit different because it nasty plotted once. And then it just started attacking. There was no in between. Uh, my question is, I wonder what would have happened if 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 the Braviary kept in Conkelder and just Stone Edged right off the rip. I feel like Conkelder probably could have taken one hit and gone off a of Stone Edge. But based off everyone else's luck, he probably would have missed. Uh, <laughs> so it, it really was just kind of a, a better play probably to switch. Um, hindsight, obviously, of course, he switched into. I believe he switched into Lapras. Uh, I, I might be wrong on that, um, but Lapras did come up while Moltres was on the field. And one of my things was that uh, Moltres had the wrong set, first of all. So, and by the way, one of Matt's, what, what the, one of Matt's wands were the MVP. Um, <laughs> so I guess it carries on, um, but it had Paris Song and my thought process while I was watching it, uh, the match was that, um, Matt could have used uh, Stone Family, could have used Paris Song, and what that would have done is force the Moltres off the field and get rid of that nasty plot boost and the, the Dynamax boosts as well, because I believe it did get some of those. Um, but, you know, again, hindsight. Um, ultimately, the Lapras does go down, but so does the Moltres, and I believe at that point it was about 5 3 ish, I think. I think Stone, the Braviary had lost three Mons uh, or two, two or three Mons by that point, and the Galarian, and the Galarian Moltres, is, the Luxrays lost uh, just the Moltres up to that point. Uh, but I think one of my favorite matches, uh, my favorite, this is probably my favorite moment so far uh, of the season, and I'm sorry, Matt, but it was the part where there was Mamoswine on the field, it Dynamaxed, and then Max brought out Colossal to bait out the Max Quake and then switch to Togekiss, brought out the Togekiss, and of course the Max Quake came out and it did not hit the Togekiss. And again, Stone got very mad. Uh, I think that, yeah, that, that was the part. Yeah, that was the part because that's frustrating <laughs> to get over predicted like that. Uh, and that was a hard over prediction. Like 
Mac, like Gamer just completely <laughs> over predicted him. So I could see why you'd get mad. I would have probably gotten mad too, to be honest. Um, but Colossal eventually did come in, do its job, get Stealth Rocks up, and he died. Um, but the Mammoth Swine got off a, I forget what it's called, Max Knuckle, I believe is what it's called. The fighting type, Dynamax move, and was able to get plus one attack. He was minus special defense, but he was able to come in and do some work. And I believe he ended up with three kills. Oh, uh, no, sorry. Wait, did I mark this one? He got three kills as well? Oh, yeah, he did. He did. He got three kills. Uh, but the one death prevented him from getting MVP. Um, so when Mammoth Swine went down eventually, finally, um, Aegislash was able to come in, set up one Sword Dance, and it just got rid of the rest of Matt's team. I believe all that he had left was uh, Haxorus. I think it came in and killed Mammoth Swine. I think that's what killed Mammoth Swine. Um, I can't remember what's on my head. Togekiss, Haxorus, uh, and... Mm, something else. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but basically, Age of Slash, who was the second MVP of the week, uh, came in with one Swords Dance and just got rid of the rest of Max's team. Um, and honestly, in my opinion, the battle kind of ended right before Mammoth Swine went down because Mammoth Swine was able to just do work against the Luxray. Uh, and it got three kills, like I mentioned. Then it went down. Then Age of Slash was able to come in. And it was not a favorable matchup for any of the mons left against the Age of Slash. So he was able to get off one Swords Dance and just get rid of the rest of his team. I believe he got that Swords Dance off for free as well because I think it was it came out against the Togekiss. So he was able to get off the Swords Dance and then that was it. <laughs> Again, uh, where <laughs> the gamer sets up with the Galarian Moltres and then the match just flips on its head. Although I don't think this one was as drastic as last week, but pretty much similar storyline. Um, you have any more thoughts on how, how this match played out? Not really. <laughs> okay. It was it was a lot of fun to watch. I'll just say that it was the first match that I had watched of this week, so it was definitely a great start. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I usually like just have one of the uh, perspectives. Like I have both of them playing at the same time, but I only have one of the audio playing. But I like to switch back and forth between tabs to see like mm -hmm. what's going on. Uh, from each perspective, like what maybe pick up like the person's muted, like what's going through their head, because obviously I can't hear what they're saying, but I can probably like when they're choosing their move, I can probably predict what they're saying or like what they what they said. So um, yeah. it's it's always an exciting thing or an interesting thing that I do with these matches. And I definitely think that I had a good time doing that watching this match. So uh, GG's to Matt. Congrats on getting one of the MVPs, and yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> was a good one. Uh, and real quick before we move on, the win does push the Atlanta Bravery up to fourth. They have a one and one record, and they are minus one uh, for the differential right now. Uh, the loss for the Luxuries puts them in last place with their 0-2 record. They are minus six because they lost both their matches 6-3. Um, so a little bit of a hole to climb out of uh, to start. That is not obviously not an ideal start. Um, not at all what we thought, um, because it just looks like other teams are just overpowering the luxuries, um, and able to break through. So I'm curious if Max is going to try something else or if he's going to keep trying that glare and mulch's nasty plot until it pays off until he's able to get a six Oh sweet. <laughs> um, but at this point he's kind of played his cards for two weeks in a row, the same cards. So odds on somebody's going to bring a counter to that. Uh, it'll be interesting. If he faces Foos or when he faces Foos, because Foos will probably just lead with Tyranitar and destroy that thing. So it's interesting. I'm very curious to see if he shakes up the formula. The Braviary are figuring it out though. They definitely are. But moving on to the final match of the week right away. It's the Kentucky Kinglers versus the Chicago Score Bunnies. Chicago Score Bunnies walked away with a 6-2 win over the Kinglers. Um, and the Kinglers actually started this match with Lunala uh, and also the score bunnies led with Ferrothorn, which uh, called last week, um, although it was kind of, you know, right there. The other talking point, I guess, was that Toxtricity didn't show up. Uh, according to Derek, it just didn't perform well in his test battles. Uh, and honestly, I can definitely see why, like, every water type that Crobats has just counters whatever Toxtricity does, because Toxtricity is not a very bulky mon, like, not at all. Uh, it can hit hard, but it, it can't really take hits. So I'm not too surprised that Tuxtricity didn't show up, but 
uh, the score buddies lead with Ferrothorn, like I mentioned, Kingler's lead with Lunala. Uh, and first turn, Lunala tries the Heat Wave on the Ferrothorn and missed. Uh, if that lands, this is a different battle. This is an incredibly different battle, but it was left off the chance and the Heat Wave missed. And it, it just, from that point on, uh, the Kingler's just never really recovered. Uh, it was pretty downhill from there. There was no, at no point did I really feel like the comeback was on. It was just kind of like Crobats was able to get in his rhythm with his team and it just, it never really, it just felt very one-sided for a majority of that match. Uh, fortunately, the Kingers didn't get swept. They were able to come out and, and get a couple kills there, but in the long run, it, it didn't make a huge difference. Uh, it was a little bit of a tough one to watch, like I mentioned. Um, the, I believe, yeah, the, the, a little bit of a talking point as well was that Lunala brought, brought Trick Room. Again, didn't make a huge difference, but Lunala brought Trick Room. I thought that was really interesting. Uh, Crowbats gave Derek props, I believe, because he brought that, uh, which was fair enough. Ferrothorn, I believe, was able to set up Stealth Rocks at one point. That was doing work. That was getting a lot of chip damage on so many Pokemon. Uh, Kyogre staying alive through that entire match was huge for coming out, getting the rain back up. Uh, Derek didn't really have a counter for the rain. Uh, and ultimately, it just... It, it was just... Honestly, Ferrothorn just came in and just completely disrupted the Kinglers. I personally, like, Seismitoad was the Pokemon that came out with the MVP because it finished off uh, the Kinglers, the last three Pokemon for the Kinglers. But for me, personally, Ferrothorn was the MVP uh, because it just completely disrupted the Kinglers. It would come out, take hits, go back, and then come back out, take hits, go back, come back out until it finally went down. Uh, but by that point, it, there was no no real chance for the Kinglers to come back. Um, and Derek's plan, whatever it was, just never really hit its stride. Uh, whereas, like I mentioned earlier, Crobats, Crobats is playing clearly. He was able to get in his stride and he, he was able to get in his rhythm and finish off this match. And I wrote it down here. Battle ended as soon as the first heat wave missed because at no point did I really feel like it. Derek, another talking point, I guess, is Derek never Dynamaxed or Gigantamaxed. I guess there was no point, but it wouldn't have hurt. Um, he probably could have done it at some point, but, you know, there he must have had his reasons for it. Uh, he kind of, I think he said in his post match that he just didn't really know why he didn't. Um, so I guess he didn't really have a reason, but, <laughs> but that was another talking point. But again, this, as soon as that first seed wave missed, this match was kind of already over. Um, what were your thoughts uh, going uh, going through this match here? Uh, first thing I want to take notice, some of you guys might be looking at me and notice that I'm looking down. I'm not looking at my phone to completely ignore Josh because I've been listening to everything he's saying. I've just been like looking at some of the, like, the, the matches while he's talking, like compare what he's saying with what I'm saying. Obviously you guys can see it because Josh puts the gameplay on like an absolute champ uh, while we're talking about this, but I just wanted to make that clear before <laughs> I get we get any uh, Landon seems uninterested in what Josh is saying comments. Anyways, <laughs> so during, during the match, um, actually like basically pre-match and post-match, like the, the whole time I was thinking like, these two guys talking to each other, about the match and like doing the match like it just seemed like they were genuinely like into it like mm -hmm. with each other like not saying any of the, any of the other guys don't care because they definitely do care but like mm -hmm. with crowbats and derek like together it seemed like the most anime-esque rivalry ever <laughs> it's just like <laughs> yeah we're friends and we're gonna have a great match together and you know, I'll I'll get you next time, pal. And like, yeah, next time I fight you, I'm gonna show how much stronger I got. It, it's it was just like it just seems like the most genuine. Of course, I don't remember the word, but <laughs> like <laughs> most, I don't want to say generic because that seems rude. It's definitely not the word that I'm thinking of. But like, it, it just seemed like the most like. Pokemon rivalry yeah, esque yeah. type of battle. So <laughs> I, I thought that that was really cool. Um, like these these two guys together, I, I, I didn't expect for them to like face off against each other so early into the season, but it was definitely um, as much as I would expect. But um, Derek is just such a positive guy and 
<laughs> Crobats definitely um, has the sa same type of energy, so it was it was fun to watch. Um, but yeah, like after last week and everything, we don't really know <laughs> each of these teams like we thought we did beforehand anymore. Um, especially mm. Derek, who we said that like, oh, who knows how it's gonna go for him because he wasn't VGC prepared and like he didn't know that it was competitive or anything. And like he said that during the video, he said that like at the beginning, he didn't think that it was going to be like he thought it was just gonna be for fun. And then like he once he heard it was everybody was serious about it, like he started trending up for it and stuff. And um, def it's definitely showing, Derek. It's definitely showing. I can say that for sure. So. Um, you did good, really good, um, especially for Crobats, who we keep on saying is is really the best in the league. And currently, uh, he is right. He's number one. Or my joint number one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which we'll also talk about in a second. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll just say I was satisfied with that battle. I really couldn't tell who I really wanted to win because I was really fun with either result. Yeah, I just wish that that heat wave hit, because then I think mm -hmm. we would have got a way more intense match. Yeah. If that heat wave hit, but that's what happens when you leave it up to chance and you take moves that aren't 100% accurate. Uh, I looked it up, and Lunal actually doesn't get any other fire type moves. So other options, I don't know. I do not know. But that match did leave the Chicago Scorpions, as we just mentioned, in joint first with the Miami Dragonites. They're both two and zero, and they both have a plus five differential. So. Next week is going to be really fun because they faced off against each other. Uh, and that loss left the Kinglers down to third place from first uh, from last week. Dropped them to third. Uh, so the top three remain the same. The bottom three remain the same. They just flipped around a bit. Um, the Kinglers also are even now on the differential. They are zero. They are at zero. So they canceled out last week. 6-2 uh, win with a 6-2 loss. So it balanced out for them. Um, but yeah, that was it for that match. And now for the matches next week, like I, met, like I just mentioned, Crobats, AKA the Chicago Score Bunnies versus the Miami Dragonites. Uh, the two first place uh, teams currently uh, facing off against each other right away. This is kind of what happened last week uh, with the Score Bunnies and Kinglers, although the Score Bunnies were third last week. Uh, but we have the two joint first teams playing and I'm really interested about this match because it's, I mean, if you thought, <laughs> if you thought last week was hard to call, this one is a little, a little bit more difficult um, because these two teams, I'm going to be really interested, especially for the Dragonites, because obviously we know it, Cinderace has been his, I mean, they're, they're just, they're ace, like, mm -hmm. it, there's a reason it's called ace, It's it's been their best Pokemon by far it's it's a 7 and 0 differential right now for it right now it's it's front runner for season mvp easily uh but the score bunnies majority of their team is water so i'm very curious to see what he's gonna do with ace if ace is even gonna show up i could definitely see definitely see rayquaza making its first appearance this season uh whether he leads with shuckle this this game again is another question uh, whether he brings Venusaur, which I feel like is a very good possibility. Swampert could be a very good possibility because it will also benefit from the rain. Um, so there are multiple options here, um, but my biggest thing, my biggest question about this matchup is the Cinderace. What is he, what, is, what are the Miami Dragonites gonna do with Cinderace? Because obviously, like I said, it's going up against the Drizzle team. So what is it gonna do uh, with uh, Libero? It can have whatever move set it wants so that is a huge advantage uh on its part um but how much how effective is cinder is going to be in this match i feel like that's going to be the biggest question here uh because crobats clearly has got the the acumen to take down anyone in this league uh so it's a question of what is what are the dragonites going to do and how is cinder is going to affect this match um what are your thoughts on this matchup here okay so thinking about the fact that um Cinderace does have Libero and uh, how um, the score bunnies is primarily water. Um, I think he might use that to his advantage, you know, with the type change 
like bait him, mm -hmm. like what we saw. I mean, it's it's not the same concept at all, but like some sort of baiting where uh, with uh, the Colossal from the Luxrays baiting uh, Matt into using uh, Max Earthquake. Um, right. Maybe Guanaka uses that to bait the fact that Cinderace is fire and uh, have Crobats try to, to figure out what kind of move uh, Guanaka is going to use. Because if he has that speed advantage, then he's going to be able to change his type mm -hmm. just like that. So, um, mm -hmm. like, Swampert might be his, his best bet to bring out against the Cinderace just because half of the types mm -hmm. of moves. Score buddies. Score buddies don't have Swampert. Oh, yeah, Guanaco has Swampert. Sorry, I was looking at, you like... You thinking the, of Seismic I, I was... Yeah, yeah, I was thinking of Seismic Toad. That's what I was thinking of. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Water Ground type, and then I pulled a Derek and just called everything Swampert. Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's what I was that's what I was thinking of. I was just thinking, you know, if, if we're coming up with some sort of strategy for Guanaco's uh, Cinderace, you know, ground is really what you got to keep in mind. The only thing that that has to worry about, you have to worry about there is that not only are half of the moves weak to ground, mm -hmm. causing you know Libero to be super weak uh, to ground. The other half either resist or are completely immune to ground. So it's kind yeah. of like a half and half situation there. So like you said, it's completely like non foreseeable how the Cinderace could be used or how to do anything against Cinderace. It's really up in the air. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's what I would be terrified about if I was literally any other team. Like I'd be <laughs> like, all right, I'm going up to Quinaco. Who am I using for the Cinderace? And should I like, just make half of my team focus on beating the Cinderace. Um, yeah. We we did say that at the beginning of the season that Max would be the most unpredictable person on the team, but I don't think we focused enough on Cinderace. And obviously, obviously now a lot of people that have not fought Guanaco yet need to think about that Cinderace. Definitely, and I I think that unpredictability is going to give the win to the dragonites controversial maybe um but i just i don't know i just feel like i just feel like the dragonites have enough to get over the line to get past the drizzle um looking at it i don't know how many of them get uh weather moves um toxapex is also another option i didn't even think about because it is water um so bringing Pokemon that benefit uh, from the Drizzle and the Cinderace's unpredictability with its typing. I'm going to hand it to the Dragonites. I think it's going to be really close, though. Um, I'm done giving scores because they're never <laughs> going to be right. Um, I'm just going to give it to the Dragonites. Uh, but I, I, I would not be surprised if the Sport Bunnies pull it out. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hand this one to the Dragonites. Are you going to give a prediction? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm gonna say we did say at the beginning that we were gonna give. Crobat's a four to one score, and if mm. if if we were to say any team is gonna lose to Crobat's, I'd say I mean win against Crobat's, I'd probably say it's gonna be Guanaco's team, the Dragon Ice, just because of that Cinderace. Like if he, if he didn't have the Cinderace, his, his team would be very good, but like the Cinderace is really just the completely unpredictable Pokemon on the team that that really exactly. makes it like. If Guanaco get comes out with a five and zero record at the end of the season, I'm just gonna say it's gonna be Cinderace. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, so moving on to the next matchup, we have the Atlanta Braviary versus the Everglade Antis. I'm not 100% on these matches. It's just what I was able to put together based off what everyone else has said. Uh, I think these are the matchups. Uh, but we have the Atlanta Braviary versus the Everglade Antis. Uh, obviously, both teams. Started week one the same, uh, but their week two matchups went a little bit different. Um, the Entes, I mean, uh, these two teams are pretty similar. They're both fairly bulky. Um, they both have fairly bulky Mons. Uh, and if if Stone decides to bring out Trick Room, uh, it's going to benefit both teams. It's, it's not really going to do too much because not a lot of the Entes Mons are very fast anyway. So it'll benefit benefit them as well, to be honest. Um, and nothing will really change. It'll just flip, but I mean, not too much will change. Um, so maybe Rayonuclus doesn't make an appearance again this week. Um, 
we have the two Senna legendaries going head to head in Dialga and Palkia. Um, I could see the Entei's probably leading with, I mean, maybe, maybe with Rotom Wash again, to be honest, but mm -hmm. Glare and Slow King could also be a very viable option. Uh, Tyranitar did well to disrupt, so he's got some good lead off options as to do the Braviary. Obviously, I feel like every single one of the Braviary's bonds have, has a move that can set up. Uh, um, so. The Entei's are definitely gonna have to look out for Age Slash with that Storage Dance, but again, like all the Braviary's mons have have a move that can set up at some point. Um, the only mon that has not been brought out uh, for the Braviary is Vileplume, and I could see Vileplume making a little bit of a difference in this match, so it's plausible that the Vileplume does pop up. Do I expect it? It's like a 50-50. Um, I guess that's easy to say, but just looking at the Entei's team, it's it could counter some mons, but the overall benefit might not be enough to bring it yet. Um, but this is a very interesting matchup. A little bit of a momentum shifter because if the Entes lose again, uh, the best record they could have is two and three. Um, but if the Braviary win again, that is a huge momentum boost for them uh, winning two in a row. But on the flip side, if the Entes win, they get a nice little, they get something uh, after three weeks of playing and the Braviary will fall to the same record. They'll both be at one and two. Uh, which will be good for the Entei's heading into playoffs because um, we're already next week's going to be basically halfway through the season already. Um, so for this one, I'm, I'm, I want to have faith. So I'm going to, I'm going to give this one the foos. Um, I just want to see them get their first win. Uh, I think it's plausible. Like I I've seen the way he's been able to, my biggest concern, I've said this last two weeks, um, is that the, the Entei's, bulk will not fully translate to power in terms of offense but he's pleasantly proved me wrong um obviously his last two matches he's racked up eight kills across both of them um so clearly he's doing something right with the flip flipping the switch from defense to offense um so i think he'll be able to, to pull this one out uh what are your thoughts on this matchup uh yeah i'm just i'm just taking a look at both their teams right now and um yeah I just out of <laughs> I don't want to call it pity, but like you know, both of these teams, oh. one's one to one has a one one record, the other one has an O two. Um, I I, I just <laughs> I do I just want to say like if this match is going to be close, which it definitely will be, I think mm -hmm. I think the the win will come out to to Foos. but like again. Part of part of me is just saying this, just because I want to see Foos win, um, just so we don't continue to feel guilty about the fact that we said that he would have an O to five record as a joke. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> if it turns out he actually has an O to five record, we're gonna feel stupid. I'm not stupid, obviously. Like we would have been right, but we would, we would feel like bad about I don't it. Want it to be right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'd feel guilty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I'd say I, I'd give this one to Foos. Yeah, I think it's also good for drama. Yeah, <laughs> drama later on the season having the same record between those two, and yeah, so we're both handing it to the Entes. Good luck, you guys. I mean, good luck to everyone, of course. But catch your first win, please. <laughs> and same to the next matchup. Uh, we have the Kentucky Kinglers versus the Detroit Luxuries. The Kinglers had an amazing first week, a not so amazing second week, but the Luxuries have really struggled uh, in the first two weeks with Glaren Moltres getting racking up some kills. Uh, I believe it has a majority of their kills. Uh, yeah, the only other kill goes to Togekiss um, for the Luxrays. So definitely they got to find some sort of momentum for their team. Uh, I personally think this might be the week we see the formula switch up a bit for the Luxray. But I mean, just looking at the teams, I say this about, about the Kinglers all the time. Their team is just nothing but power. Mm -hmm. It's just really nothing but power. Um, every single Mon, I believe, up to this point has made an appearance. So now the Kinglers can use whatever team they want. There's no worry about that anymore. Every, they brought every single Mon already. So the next three weeks, they can bring whoever they want without having to worry about having to bring someone off the bench uh, that they haven't used yet. So with that being said, I think they'll be able to bring out a, a full matchup, a full team that they know will counter the Luxuries and... I just think the raw power is more than more than enough. Um, I said this last week, but this week more so than last week. Uh, nothing against the Luxuries. I don't want to see them go 0-3, but 
just looking at the matchups from Pokemon to Pokemon, it just doesn't look close to me. Uh, Mimikyu easily counters, and not easily, but Mimikyu does help to counter the, the Moltres, um, as does many other mons in the team. Galarian Darmanitan hasn't hit the field, um, so it'll be interesting to see that. Um, that could counter the Moltres. There's a lot of things that could counter the Moltres. Um, if that's what the lectures are going to roll with again, I don't see it happening. I think you at some point you just got to say like, okay, it didn't work two weeks in a row. Let's try something a little bit different. Uh, maybe he doesn't set up right away. Maybe he brings something else out and then brings, uh, the mulches out to set up whatever it is. Um, I think the format needs to change a little bit, but I feel like with that change, the Kinglers will be able to come out. And like I mentioned there, I believe they're the only team in the league now that has brought everyone uh double checking yeah they're the only team in the league that has already brought everyone on their team so now he can kind of hit, hit his stride Derek can just choose whatever team he wants to take on the luxuries and i think that's going to really benefit him in this matchup uh i think he's going to walk away with a win in that one what do you think yeah i just want to say uh kudos to Derek because that's that's an absolute power strat just saying all right first two weeks we're just going to focus on bringing everybody out so then i can choose whatever i want for the rest of the matches mm -hmm. honestly i'm surprised that no one else did that it's just like let's let's throw everybody out there right away so i can use my the rest of my team for the rest of these matches but, but like whatever i want to use um yeah. but you know if max does lead with with Moltres, um i think the first thing like derek's gonna want to think about is just like there's two things that can happen here. He leads with the Moltres again, or he doesn't. Obviously, those are the only two options. It's not <laughs> like there's a third one. Um, but looking at Derek's team, there's at least three or four Mons that are weak to uh, one or the other types on Moltres, because it is the glaring uniform. And uh, it's definitely been powerful with its dark type moves, so. Um, I think the first thing Derek's gonna want to think about is like who, who he can use, considering that the Moltres comes out first. But at the same time, like use somebody that that is gonna be like power in both ways. That can not only def like take on the Moltres at full power, but can also uh, take on literally anything else on his team. And um, if I'm thinking about that, I think that he can bait Max by like starting off with Gengar. Because if mm. if Max does start off doesn't start off the Moltres, then then Derek can just like keep on going with Gengar. But if he does bring out the Moltres first, then that would obviously just be bait from Derek, and he could like switch out to something else that would be super effective against the Moltres. Because yeah. like we said, he has some power on his team. Like Dracovish might not be super effective against. Moltres in any way, but I definitely think that like it could bring some power out against it, considering it is a very, um, very good mon in Gen 8 VGC. Yeah. But another really good mon in the VGC that people talk about all the time is Galarian Darmanitan, and that is super effective against Moltres. So if, if I were thinking of the three Pokemon that Derek should probably think of bringing to this match, it'd be Dracovish. Uh, Galarian yeah. Darmanitan and Gengar. That's all I'm thinking for next week. Um, in my opinion, the leadoff with Mimikyu would be the best option here. That, that, that um, would be too. Yeah, either Gengar yeah. or Mimikyu, like baiting with a ghost type. I mean, well, Mimikyu's well, very my... ghost, but I, I, know what, I know what you're thinking. It's not about, you know, super effectiveness and stuff. That's stuff I tend to think about, but you obviously have mm -hmm. some other sort of strat. Well, my reasoning is that if Mimikyu comes out and let's say Moltres sends off, uh, Max is probably going to nasty plot right away. Um, Derek can get off a free sword stance with Mimikyu and it can take one hit and deal a hit to Moltres. Um, so it'll deal a plus two, whatever, Shadow Sneak, not Shadow Sneak, a fairy type move, play rough, whatever. Um, he could Dynamax right off the rip and just get rid of Moltres before it's even a problem. Take Guaranteed take a hit and get rid of Moltres uh, and still be Dynamax because it'll probably be a one hit KO. So in my opinion, Mo uh, Mimikyu just seems like the best possible lead for Derek uh, or Galarian Darmanitan. Gengar is also a viable option. My thing is, is it does, you kind of have to burn a turn 
um, to get it out because unless Derek just lets it die. Um, well, we've seen what Gengar can do, so I don't know if that's... I don't know if he'd want it to go down, but he's going to have to switch it because it will die. And at that point, the Luxrays probably will get off a free Nasty Plot. Then it gets a little ugly from there on out from having to take down Moltres. Um, so it's... it's He can make it work. Um, Snorlax could also be a viable option because of its bulk. It's just straight up bulk. Um, so I personally think the Kinglers just have counters for pretty much everything the Luxuries are gonna, are gonna bring. And I just, I find this a really difficult matchup for the Luxuries, which is why I'm handing the win to the Kinglers there. Um, did you mention that? Yeah. You're... Yeah, I, de I definitely think that Derek's gonna win. Okay. It's just that I was heavily focused on how he's gonna win. How? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys, like, like I've said, I'm not competitively, like, trained or skilled or anything like that. Day one of knowing Pokemon, the first thing I focused on is type effectiveness rather than strength in terms of stats. So, you know, if you've ever seen a Nuzlocke from mine, then you know that the first thing I think of is like, is this super effective against this and not how strong is this, no matter what type it is. So, <laughs> so if, if I ever become part of the EBL, wink, wink, hint, hint, um, that might be my weakness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so those are your week three matchups those are our predictions and that is the week two roundup for the elite battle league that was a little bit of a longer one but we had a, a very good discussion about each matchup and about the next week's matchups as well um of course of course can i stress this enough go down in the description down below go to the coaches channels go subscribe support a team if you aren't already go ahead maybe one of these guys you watch them regularly go support their team watch their matches cheer them on definitely go do that but like i said check out their links in the description down below and like Ladin mentioned we both have sections on our channel for the elite battle league uh that also has all the channels there and of course check out my links down below and of course my co-hosts links down below inferno men uh they will be down there all our links will all be down there as well uh, be sure to check all of that good stuff out and of course tune in this saturday for week three of the league battle we have some very intense matchups so you don't want to miss it you don't okay any last words good sir i don't know if i'm looking the right way make sure to hydrate not. i i've been drinking throughout this whole recording so drink your water and stay hydrated same here and I hope all of you had a f have, had not had, have, well, I guess had to, uh, a fantastic day. And we'll see you guys next month, next Tuesday. This comes out on Tuesday, not Monday, uh, for the week three roundup. We'll see you guys then. Bye.